Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and today is day four of RPG a day, and we have a few really good prompts today. So today you might get to see multiple things discussed. Weapon, search, reward, and figure. We'll probably not worry about figure, but those other three I think are really good. So let's get started. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe so you can see more content like this. And also if you wanna see a variety of tabletop RPG games played, if you wanna see uh, tips videos, reviews on a variety of products, then this is the place for you. So again, smash that subscribe button and give us a like. Now, again, I'm gonna be talking about a few different things in this video. I'm gonna talk about weapon, I'm gonna talk about search and reward. Uh, with weapon, I wanna quickly mention we are going to start doing magical items over on our Patreon for you guys to have for your D&D 5e games. Link is in the link tree below. So weapons. Uh, I am somebody who likes to make magical weapons that feel special. Uh, what I mean by this is I don't typically go, oh, this is a plus one sword, this is a plus two, plus three. In fact, in my mind, in my homebrew world, a plus one weapon is not necessarily magical. A plus one weapon would be an exquisitely made weapon. Uh, it might be made with a better, stronger material. It might be made with a, a material that can be uh, sharper uh, or harder than normal. Maybe it's got a certain weight property to it. Maybe it's well balanced, you know, things like that. And so if you want to make a weapon really interesting, there's a few things I think you need to do. One, it needs a story. Maybe it's a background of who made it, why they made it. Maybe it's got a special property to it, something it does that makes it different from a normal weapon. You know, it could be a weapon with a lunar property to it, and so it only works at nighttime. Or maybe it does a certain type of damage, and it has a really cool, flavorful way of doing that. So maybe it's uh, when you hit something with a fire uh, axe, as soon as you make contact, flame erupts on the blade as it slices through it. Or maybe it turns like a, a scolding, glowing red as you hit it. Things like that. Uh, you also, I think, need to have a interesting history to it. Whether the players know that or not. Maybe your history could be this character once had it in my setting and such and such. Now, you don't have to ever tell the players that. But just having that flavor in the back of your mind can really lead to some cool ideas and things like that. Now, I always, when I'm doing stuff like this though, I like to add a, a type of damage to it. I also like to uh, give powers that are limited in their use. So I might say, okay, this is a, uh, a hammer of fireball. Well, what does that mean? It means that you throw the hammer and it, when it hits the location you want, it explodes a fireball out just like the fireball spell. Now, you don't let them just do this all the time. You limit it to once per day or twice per day, you know, however many charges. Or you can do something even better. So it always deals fire damage, right? Normal damage, dice for damage. However, it always deals fire damage. Now, when it expends all of its charges though, say you give it five charges forever. Once all the five charges are gone, it never can do that ability again. Does it maintain the ability to do fire? Or does it just completely go out? Does the fire in the hammer go out and it no longer can do that type of damage? Is it now just a regular old hammer? I don't know, but that could be a really cool item for your games. And I like to do stuff like that, okay? It makes it so now you've given them a magic item, but eventually it's gonna wear out. And now they're gonna still need more magic items. And so you can still cycle through things. That is my favorite type of magic item to give. Maybe they want to keep it because it's been such a epic weapon for them and they've loved it. Maybe you implement being able to put runes into it, similar to like how they do in certain video games, like Dragon Age, and they could add another fire rune to it to replenish its abilities, you know, things like that. Really cool, if you ask me. Would love to hear how you handle magical weapons or just weapons in general in your setting in the comments below. Now with that, let's move on to search. 
So searching is a very interesting thing in tabletop RPGs. You do it various ways, investigation, you know, passive perception, perception roles, uh, stuff like that. And a lot of times in dungeons, for example, you will hide a secret door or you will hide a secret compartment in the bottom cupboard. The problem is when DMs put important story elements behind these things. Like you can't advance through this dungeon to completion without finding that secret door. And when you do something like this, you are putting a lot on a die roll. So when searching for something, if it's mandatory, they have to find it. You need to work into the failure a way that they're still going to find it. So maybe the failure is what springs a trap. Or maybe in looking, like just walking and not actually looking for this thing, they get attacked. Uh, or they, uh, maybe they, maybe you ask them for a perception roll. They roll a, a nat one and they trip and fall through the secret door. And now the other players know there's a secret door that they are trying to find their way through, like maybe it's an illusion or something. And they're trying to find how to get through this magical door. And so they're like making rolls. They know it's there. Their friend's gone on the other side and they just have to make the rolls. If they fail the rolls, then they have to come up with some other solution to get through this secret door, you know? There's a lot of ways you can handle that. But failing forward, especially with something mandatory like a search sometimes, I think is very important. And, uh, you know, again, don't, my general tip, especially for new DMs, is don't put stuff that needs to be done to further the game, to further the story, behind dice rolls. Unless it's combat. Combat, obviously, is always behind dice rolls. But yeah, that's what I would say about that. Uh, now, I would love to hear what you think of that, because not everyone agrees that if you fail a dice roll, you should still somehow succeed with a negative effect. So again, I would love to hear what you think about that. Um, but I think that's all I'm going to say on that, because I could do a variety of videos on that, and I probably will moving forward in the future. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is reward. So rewards are something I love to give to my players. I like to reward players for role-playing things. Um, for example, in our Black Rock Adventures game this past weekend, uh, my wife Paula is playing a barbarian and she has purposely played her character dumb because her intelligence is low. My wife is not a dumb person. She's very intelligent. However, she has role played the hell out of this barbarian being dumb. She has had him do, uh, try to tell the players, Hey, we should put these bones in this barrel. Now she has a magic item that is a barrel of bones. And if you have bones in it, you can do some cool stuff. Uh, so she kept doing that and she was talking about, yeah, let's throw bones in it. And like the whole party's like, no. And it was so hilarious. And some of the stuff she came up with, I don't remember the exact thing, but I awarded her inspiration because I was so inspired by her role play. And again, I love it when players do stuff like that and they play up their character, even though that's, you know, it is something mechanically beneficial in this instance, it was still played up as very, being very dumb and not persuasive to the rest of the party. And uh, the party wasn't having it, to be honest. Now, I also like to reward my players with a lot of magical items or one-off things, like I had discussed earlier. And I like to try and make them as unique as possible. Uh, I will take inspiration from existing magic items and tweak them. I will take inspiration from monsters. I will take inspiration from TV shows, movies, all sorts of different places just pictures on Instagram or, or Pinterest. I take that inspiration and I turn it into something and then I give it to my players. I absolutely love this way of doing it and uh, I can't recommend it enough. So again, don't be afraid to reward your players because you, also need to, because you also need to remember that you can take magical items and you have to give them to monsters or have them hidden somewhere for the players to get them. Give them to the monsters. Make your monsters or, or their adversaries tough. This is going to make them a lot tougher. Let them use some of those charges against those players. Let the players see how these items work before they have them. 
And then when they have them, it's so much more rewarding. Don't just have it in a chest behind the monster. Like why is that hobgoblin not using that war hammer of fireball? Why are they using a regular old sword when they could be using that war hammer? So again, let them use it. It's gonna make it more fun for you as the DM. It's gonna make it more challenging for your players especially if you're playing D&D 5e, where apparently people think that you can't kill player characters because, you know, they're so OP. Give your monsters these limited-use magic items like I talked about earlier, and you're going to find it so much more rewarding. So with that, we're going to end there. If you are interested in seeing me create a document with magical items, uh, or if you want to go and get my current tables I create for people, uh, head on over to our Patreon, where if you become a patron, at least a dollar or more, then you get access to all these things I create and I put up for my patrons. Um, right now, I ha don't have the budget for artwork for it yet, but maybe eventually I'll start doodling my own stuff and putting it in there. With that, though, you can get all of it. I do a lot of D20 tables. I do D100 tables, and you get access to all of that as just a $1 patron. This was Master the Game. I am Juice. Game on.